up everybody welcome back to my youtube channel so today i have a pretty interesting uh, benchmarking session for you guys because uh, i am going to be checking out how the rtx 2080 fares to the uh, old generation gtx 1080 in laptops and uh, yeah as you can see i have two Zephyrus uh, asus rog models on my desk here this one is the gx 701 gx and this one here is the GX501G. Uh, so this is uh, with i7-8750H uh, processor and this one has the exact same processor. So it's not the, uh, it's not the 9th gen, it's still the 8th gen uh, CPU that is inside of this laptop. Which is uh, kind of good because this will give us a proper evaluation on how much is a, an RTX 2080 in a laptop better than a GTX 1080. So should you, you know, put more money into your purchase to get a, you know, a brand new video card uh, in your brand new laptop, right? With ray tracing technology. Uh, so we're going to be checking a few games out here. We're going to be checking out Assassin's Creed Odyssey uh, benchmark mode, and we're going to be checking out Tom Clancy's The Division 2 as well, which kind of should give us a really proper idea how uh, AAA games uh, work on these uh, laptops and maybe some future video games as well. Plus, uh, we're gonna be uh, checking out uh, Battlefield 5, uh, which has ray tracing technology, so I can enable that there. And we're gonna be checking out how you know ray tracing looks, but I guess it's better for you guys to just you know go on YouTube and search like uh, Nvidia just recently. Uh, posted a bunch of you know up, uh, new upcoming games that have ray tracing even minecraft has it now uh, so better to check there i guess but we're still gonna be checking how you know frame rate fares and stuff like that if we enable and disable ray tracing right uh, but yeah it's it, as i've heard it has been getting a little bit better over time with patches uh, so hopefully the frame rate uh, uh, deduction that we're gonna be getting when we're gonna be enabling ray tracing is not that hard in upcoming games uh, but anyway yeah I wrote a quick little few words maybe about the new model here I do love the bezel-less uh, trying to be bezel-less design uh, it still has some bezels right uh, some small bezels but definitely a lot a lot better look than the old 15.6 uh, inch my, uh, laptop uh, screen that the Zephyrus uh, 501 has. Uh, so this one here is now a 17.3 inch uh, model. And uh, ex other than that, I mean, it's pretty similar to the old model. Really, really rigid, uh, nice metal frame. And I really, really love the design. I mean, it's so super slim. RTX 2080 inside of it. I mean, <laughs> what more to ask, right? Maybe could be a little bit quieter, but I, I mean, it's not a freaking RTX 2080 without proper i7 processor, right? So anyway, let's uh, check out some benchmarks and uh, hopefully my video won't be too boring. Right, so before we begin our benchmarking here, this is how hot the GX701 GX is at idle. Now, uh, as it is a little bit bigger laptop than the GX501G, uh, it is a 17.3 inch model versus the 15.6 inch model. That means there's a lot more room for cooling and that kind of shows, you know, uh, it is a little bit, you know, um, cooler on uh, at idle and even, you know, when playing video games as well. Uh, but then again, yeah, 45 degrees Celsius here and rising a little bit. I guess it, you know, tops out at around 50 degrees Celsius. So a little bit better temperatures at idle than the G uh, GX 501 G. Uh, but yeah, uh, the RTX 2080, uh, 42 degrees Celsius here. And um, yeah, I guess it's a pretty decent temperature for such a powerful laptop, right? Uh, now, I guess I could you know run the laptop uh, a little longer here and the temperatures might rise a little bit more uh, but yeah I mean at idle this is around about you know what you're going to be uh, getting but anyway let's uh, run our first benchmark and let's start from Assassin's Creed Odyssey Alright, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey here running and um, before we begin our benchmarking let's head into the options menu and um, yeah, I'm gonna show you what I'm using uh, as my benchmarking uh, reference here, right? 
i7 8750H and on RTX 2080 uh, running the 436.02 drivers. I think these are the Gamescom drivers that Nvidia promoted. Uh, but anyway, uh, 1080p resolution, right? 144 Hz, right? Uh, and in graphics uh, settings, everything turned to as uh, maximum detail as possible. But uh, let's turn off anti aliasing because this hinders performance too much that makes things too blurry. Uh, and everything, yeah, as maximum detail as possible here. And uh, let's run our benchmark through here and see how our. RTX 2080 fares compared to the GTX 1080, which we're gonna be checking out uh, just right after this test. Alright, so benchmarking has begun. 73, 62, 64 frames per second here. 70... Over 60 frames per second, that's really nice here. But dropping to... Oh, 43, 46... Well, trying, trying to hit that 50 frames per second mark here, uh, but yeah, quite low actually, uh, considering it is an RTX 2080 here. But I do really believe that this is all to do uh, because of the CPU. I think the CPU is bottlenecking the RTX 2080 here, and I think it really might be better to get the GX701 GX with the 9th series CPUs instead. Because this is pretty similar uh, frame rate that I uh, saw on the 1080. But we're gonna check out the 1080 benchmark in a second here. But let's see how it fares here. 57 frames per second as the average frame rate. And... Uh, that is quite low, actually, <laughs> but I do believe that the CPU is really bottlenecking here at the moment. But 57 frames per second, I mean, it's around 60 frames per second, right? Uh, and 60 frames per second is, you know, the the most minim minimum pretty much nowadays that you really want to see, right? Uh, but then again, a few frames under 60 is not that bad. And, you know, 45 to 55 uh, frames per second range in video games is really, really nice as well, but you do not want to play below that. Uh, but then again, yeah, 57 frames per second, it's quite decent, but I really feel that I really need to see how this exact laptop uh, performs with a 9th series Intel CPU. But anyway, uh, this is the result uh, on the RTX here on the i7-8750H, right? Uh, let's head on to the GX501G run the same exact benchmark at the same exact settings and see how it fares there. Alright, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey here running and uh, quickly before I uh, run my benchmark, in the options menu you can see that I have the i7-8750H here, right, with the GTX 1080 Max-Q and running the exact same uh, 436.02 drivers. And uh, yeah, 1080p, everything the same, everything turned to the most maximum detail possible, and uh, yeah, let's hit benchmark and see how it fares. Alright, so benchmarking has begun. 62, 58, 60 frames per second. I mean, I think that's kind of really similar to what we saw on the GX701 GX, right? I mean, really similar the frame rate here. Third, a little bit in the 30s. Ooh. I mean, okay, could be a little bit lower, right? It should be a little bit lower. But definitely wasn't expecting the GTX 1080 being so close to the RTX 2080 in Assassin's Creed Odyssey here. And it's a perfect game. Really, really de uh, rich in detail, right? In graphics. And a really proper benchmark for nowadays PCs, right? Uh, to see how some, some upcoming games also could fare on this laptop, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, frame rate looks really, really similar. That is really interesting. But I think I know why. I do think I know why. Let's see, what's the final score? 50, 51 frames per second. I really believe that the i7-8750H is bottlenecking the RTX 2080. And maybe even the 1080. 
Although, yeah, RTX uh, 2080 still got, you know, 10% better result, right? But this could be a real problem for the CPU here. Really, really interesting stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to the second benchmark, which is going to be Tom Glances The Division 2. Right, so Tom Glances The Division 2, a really great uh, game made by Ubisoft Massive, and a proper game to check out how powerful your uh, computer is, right? Uh, so a really nice and viable game uh, to benchmark your uh, PC. So 1080p, 144Hz, DirectX 12 enabled, and in graphical settings we are using uh, well, we're, we are using ultra detail, the most maximum detail possible, uh, and uh, with the exception of anti-aliasing, which is turned to medium. Uh, but yeah, let's see benchmark here and let's see how this exact laptop fares. Uh, with uh, RTX 2080 and the i7-8750H and then let's check out the GX501G as well. Alright, so 118 frames per second here uh, at the beginning shot. That's a pretty nice uh, result if I do remember. I do... I have run these tests on the 1080 like half a year ago so I kind of remember what it exactly got uh, but 80 frames per second still I do believe that the CPU is bottlenecking uh, quite hard here really really want to get this exact laptop uh, with a proper 9th series Intel uh, CPU to compare those two here but yeah 79 frames per second I mean the frame rate is totally fine yeah, we're not hitting that 144 frame, uh, frames per second magic mar marker, right? Uh, but still, everything turned to maximum detail, but I do think that uh, the problem is that we're only using 1080p resolution here. But then again, it makes sense because, you know, on laptops below, I mean, like 32 inches, you won't really see any benefit of 4K. Uh, 1080p will be... A almost exactly as sharp as 4k uh, but yeah 88 frames per second 90 frames per second that's pretty pretty decent result here i think uh, let's see so 85 frames per second here 7629 points uh, and um, yeah i mean it's a decent result but i do believe that the cpu is really bottlenecking here now i'm not that hundred percent certain that a 9th series uh, Intel CPU would be that much better uh, or something like that but I do believe that there's some really decent performance uh, to be found if we uh, are going to get this laptop with a 9th series uh, CPU uh, but anyway let's quickly head on to the GX501G as well and see how uh, that fares with its uh, GTX 1080 it uh, should be a pretty interesting uh, comparison here. But yeah, 85 frames per second in Division 2, pretty nice result. Hopefully they will implement ray racing soon here, because I think this game is perfect for ray racing. Uh, although I do believe we're not going to be seeing 85 frames per second then. But fingers crossed, we're still going to hit over 60. Anyway, yeah, let's uh, check out the other laptop as well, the GTX 1080. Alright, so Tom Glance is the Division 2 here, going into the settings menu, 1080p, right, 144Hz, we are using DirectX 12 renderer here, and everything turned to pretty much the same settings, right, everything to as maximum detail as possible here, uh, with the option of, you know, turning the anti-aliasing to medium. So, let's quickly rerun the benchmark here, see how it fares. Alright, so 82, 87, 89, 90 frames per second here. I mean, some really good performance from the 1080. Uh, but again, I think kinda really, really similar uh, performance to, in terms of the RTX 2080 laptop, right? With the sa same exact CPU, so I do think that the CPU is actually really, really bottlenecking. Maybe even both of these GPUs. So maybe the GPUs are in laptops uh, much, much further ahead in terms of technology, right? And the CPUs. 
I mean, I guess the case is the same for you know regular desktop PCs, but I think there's a lot more to play, right? But yeah, definitely didn't expect the CPU bottlenecking so hard here, and I do believe the CPU is bottlenecking. Although we do see GPU at 98%, right, and CPU just around 50% usage. But I, but I still do want to think that this is everything to do with the CPU. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what the actual score is going to be here. 65 frames per second, 62, 61, 63, 65 frames per second as average, with a score of 5869 points here. And uh, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit bigger difference, right? Maybe even like 15 to 20 percent uh, better performance on the RTX 2080. But then again, I, I do really think that the CPU is a huge bottleneck uh, on these laptops here, right? So it will be really interesting to check out a proper uh, ninth generation Intel CPU in the RTX 2080 at least. But anyway, that is going to conclude the quick little testing that I had in mind for these laptops here. Two really really great games, right, in terms of graphics, in terms of gameplay, right, and in terms of the size and scope of the games, right. So this should give us a pretty neat, uh, neat idea how these laptops will perform in up and upcoming, you know, proper games, like maybe, maybe like Watch Dogs 3 or something like that, right. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, that is going to be... Uh, Concluding my benchmarking here for the GX501G. Right, so Battlefield 5 here, uh, a game which we are going to be finally checking out, ray racing technology here, because this is one of the very few uh, games at the moment out there that actually has ray racing support, right, and actually uh, makes great uh, use of it. Uh, so, yeah, in the options menu, uh, I am using the native P, right, 144 Hz. And uh, yeah, TXR is enabled, and if you have any kind of issues to enabling this, uh, be sure to update your drivers and Windows. So I had to have like Windows version 1809 at least. Uh, I think there's 1901 uh, version at the moment, uh, the latest or something like that. So I had this issue, had to update my Windows to that version, and finally I could enable raid racing. Uh, kind of kind of crazy, but that that was my issue uh, that I had to, had to mess around with uh, quite a lot. But anyway, uh, we're gonna be using ultra detail and telling as low as possible, and uh, DXR raid racing reflection quality ultra. Uh, so we're gonna be messing around a little bit here. Maybe turn everything to the lowest setting. Uh, with DXR enabled, and then we're just gonna disable as well and see, you know how uh, the frame rate fares as well because uh, we do want to see around 144 frames per second without ray racing because this is a competitive game right uh, but if we enable ray racing how big of an impact it will be on our frame rate so yeah it should be pretty interesting stuff so let's check it out all right so finally made it to the game 65 frames per second with ray racing enabled everything is ray raced now and yeah, we're hitting about 60 frames per second here. Oh my god, look at the reflections. So pretty, so pretty. But I do feel that we're gonna be losing a lot of frames here. Oh my god. But yeah, keep an eye on the frame rate here. 52 frames per second. 55, 54. I mean, it's a pretty nice result. 53 the frames per second here at the really beginning shot here and I guess that's uh, what we can expect right oh my god look at the reflections and this is just Battlefield 5 right uh, more and more games nowadays are coming with ray racing support so should give us a pretty good idea you know how good the games will look right with ray racing but look at the reflections wow and it doesn't really drop below 50 and we have everything turned up to the most maximum detail possible. And again, you know, uh, would be really interesting to get a 9th series CPU in here 
to see how much the frame rate you know could improve uh, but pretty sure i can say that exactly 50 frames per second is what we're getting on the i7 8750h uh, with rtx 2080 but jesus christ oh my god oh. it does look like a different game a little bit in my opinion uh, but then again we're gonna be disabling ray racing in a bit as well and uh, running on ultra detail and let's see what the frame rate uh, does and how good the reflections are uh, then uh, but let's move on uh, further up ahead here a little bit and, uh, and let's uh, put everything to the lowest detail possible right and see how much we can improve our frame rate uh, but still use uh, ray racing right uh, so let's try and move up here look at this tree oh my god and even the smoke is reflected here that is that's really crazy okay wow so 50 frames per second here right 52 50 yeah, 50 50 frames per second now let's head into the settings here and let's turn everything to the lowest setting possible so we are going to be leaving uh, ray racing turned on uh, but on the low setting so let's see how bad the reflections now look and how good the frame rate is so 77 76 frames per second here and the reflections still look really really good did they even change <laughs> 80 frames per second 83 frames per second 81 i mean it's super super smooth now uh, you know play but of course everything is turned to the lowest setting but ray racing is still enabled on the low setting really interesting really interesting now let's uh, let's quit the game for a second and i'm gonna be disabling ray racing altogether and uh, let's see how the frame rate is 10 so let's keep in mind we had 51 frames per second on everything turned to max and if we turn everything to low with ray racing on but on low settings it was around 80 frames per second right all right all right so everything turned to ultra detail without ray racing 130 frames per second in the beginning shot here 140 even but yeah okay the reflections are not quite as they used to be with ray racing right 160 frames per second Ooh. but yeah almost almost taking full benefit of our 144 hertz 3 millisecond response time screen here but 120 frames per second at the very beginning shot here that's like double right <laughs> that's double the performance improvement oh my god okay that's quite a huge hit we take with ray racing but yeah the reflection quality is definitely not there but still not bad right i mean if you wouldn't know how ray racing looks right right then you would say this is totally fine <laughs> this is totally fine reflections right ultra detail ultra detail reflections I mean, yeah, but look at the frame rate. I mean, it's double, 120, almost 144 frames per second to take full advantage of our really nice 17.3 inch, uh, 144 hertz screen, right? But yeah, oh my God, the frame rate loss is just absolutely humongous, right? Oh uh, God. All right, well, let's run back where we uh, took our uh, graphics quality down and we're gonna be checking what can we get you know on the lowest detail possible god damn it i'm gonna die here okay i shot two of my buddies in the head but that's okay because i killed two persons and my buddies uh well i hit them in the in this thing right <laughs> in, in in the helmet anyway 120 frames per second here where we you know took carry uh, detail off right and if i'm not mistaken we had like 50 frames per second here right that's insane 
All right, but yeah, we can't see the smoke effects, anything. We can't see the grease reflecting here, but we do get, we can see 120 frames per second, double the frame rate, right? Now, let's head into the options manual in the video settings. And uh, yeah, as you can see, everything was on ultra at the moment and ray racing is off, right? Now, let's uh, set everything to the lowest detail possible and see what our frame rate does. 167, 175 frames per second, 78! That's just insane! So again, double the frame rate, right? If we do, uh, turned everything off to the lowest settings before we did receive about 80 frames per second, it's now pretty much over double frame rate. And we can finally get full benefit of our 144 frames per second screen, right? Really crystal clear buttery smooth movement here and yeah I mean raid racing it definitely is a huge burden a huge task on your uh, computer on your video card right and even though that you know EA improved the frame rates uh, via a update right uh, for raid racing it's still it's still half the frame rate that we you know, get if we don't use ray racing, right? So with ray racing, we had 50 to 80 frames per second. Consider, compare if we used like uh, maximum or lowest detail. Uh, okay, the sprite popped out a little bit. Uh, so I mean, yeah, losing half of your frames just to have a little bit better reflections and lighting, right? I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. I definitely do wanna check out, you know, how this uh, to RTX 2080 in this laptop uh, fares with a proper 9th series Intel CPU. So maybe I will get a uh, new laptop with the 9th series CPU. But yeah, these are the frame rates here. I mean, I mean, I don't know if I. If I would you I mean I would use raid racing in single player games right but not in competitive games uh, definitely if I can't hit my 144 uh, frames per second uh, threshold mark right uh, but anyway that kind of concludes my testing here hope you guys enjoyed it hope my video wasn't too boring for you guys and uh, yeah that is the GX 701 GX this is how it performs in these kinds of games and uh, yeah, hopefully it will get better with time. All right, so benchmarking has concluded here, and these are the temperatures uh, that the RTX 2080, the GX701GX uh, um, received. So 95, uh, 91 to 95 degrees Celsius here, and um, the GPU, the RTX 2080, reached about 73 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot but uh, considerably lower temperatures than on the GX501G because uh, um, yeah uh, this is a little bit bigger uh, laptop right a 17.3 inch uh, screen that means also there's a lot more room for the cooling solution so yeah I do see how they managed to get uh, lower temperatures I'm uh, really impressed how low the GPU temperatures are but the CPU still needs work about 90 I mean it's hitting near 100 degrees right and I didn't play that much on it right now right so we just ran a couple of benchmarks right uh, hoo -hoo -hoo. it is quite hot quite concerning the temperatures for the CPU so hopefully Asus will address these issues in the future but yeah uh, they have done a lot of testing here so I guess there's no real issues but then again you know how how will the laptop parts inside here uh, still work like five years down the line um, hard to say but anyway these are the temperatures here and uh, yeah that kind of concludes the testing of the GX701 GX right so this concludes my benchmarking here and yeah as you can see they are pretty similar in terms of performance and I do I do think this is all down to the CPU and the resolution as we're only using a 1080p screen here 
and if the screen is not bigger than 25 inches right uh, there's no point in putting a 4k screen in it as there's you can't really see the difference there in terms of sharpness even. 1080p is really sharp up to about like 25 inches. So it really makes sense here to use a 1080p 144Hz screen, right? Uh, but then again, yeah, uh, the CPU I think is the real bottleneck here. And uh, would be really interesting if I can get my hands on the same laptop with, but with the uh, 9 series Intel uh, CPUs. Anyway, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the quick little testing here. I mean, this is about two times more expensive as the GX 501 g but I have been using the GX 501 g as my main laptop uh, personally for half a year and I really, really love it. And if you can get it around 2000 euros or less, it's a really good bang for buck in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get the latest and greatest, then the RTX 2080, the GX 701 GX is not a bad option at all, although you have to be kind of rich. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you do get the raid racing st stuff and uh, such, but I don't know how well raid racing games will perform on this laptop in the future. But of course, we can fiddle around with the settings, we don't have to run everything on Ultra, right? So yeah, anyway, that's going to conclude my quick little video uh, of the GX 701 GX versus the GX 501 G, the RTX 2080 versus the GTX 1080 uh, on the same CPU. So hopefully somebody got some pretty decent uh, ideas on, you know, what laptop to get in the future. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you soon, guys. Ciao for now.